Disclaimer. Judge Ron Rangel is providing this podcast and website for educational purposes only, as well as to give the public general information regarding topics related to the criminal justice system. The views, thoughts, and opinions of his guest speakers are the speaker's own and do not represent the views, thoughts, and opinions of Judge Rangel. All rise. You are now listening to Beyond the Gavel with Judge Ron Rangel, educating the public and expanding mindsets. Subscribe on our website, beyondthegavelpodcast.com, or your favorite podcast platform for more of the latest podcast episodes and updates. Welcome to Beyond the Gavel with Judge Ron Rangel. I'm your host. Today we have a very special episode. I'm actually very excited to be speaking to four law school students, students that just completed their first year. I want you to introduce yourself to whoever may be listening. My name is Kerrigan Cusack. I am from a small town outside of Victoria, Texas. Hello, Kerrigan. Hi, Judge. Thanks for having us. I'm Diego Lopez. I'm from Oklahoma, and yeah, I am a rising 2L at St. Mary's University School of Law. Hello, Diego. My name is Megan Monahan, and I'm from Corpus Christi, Texas. Hello, Megan. Hello, Judge. My name is Ryan Blakey. Uh, I'm from Austin, Texas, also a rising 2L student at St. Mary's. Hello, Ryan. Thank you all so much for being here. You guys are law school students. This is an interesting time to be in law school. We thought it would be a great idea to have law students come in, talk about your experiences. So let's get started. What's it like? What's it like to be in law school in 2023? I mean, I would say it's actually interesting. Um, One thing that I've noticed is the repercussions of what COVID-19 really did do worked in a the legal field right after COVID hit compared to now you still see like the backup of cases and ever-changing laws that are now finally going in that were on hold because of COVID so I would say it's pretty different. So we've talked about how COVID-19 has changed the practice of law and the courtroom has it changed the classroom in any way from your experience? For me I graduated before COVID-19 hit so Going into law school, I didn't actually get that undergraduate student experience during COVID. But coming into law school this last year, you can see that inclement weather happens. There's still class because you could do it remotely with a day's notice and there's no issue. There is clearly more of an emphasis on electronic learning that now feels mastered because I remember seeing students who were like doing a remote session in either high school or college. And they're like, I'm not learning a thing. This feels all over the place. The teachers are freaking out. But now you can see how streamlined it is. And that was, at least for me, the the biggest perspective shift. What did you do before you went to law school, Ryan? I worked in an insurance defense firm as a legal secretary. And that was my first job out of undergrad. I had just majored in public administration and marketing. And I kind of just wanted a nine to five job that paid the bills. And once I actually got into the law practice, I actually met lawyers, actually found out what they were like and saw under the car hood, so to speak. And that was interesting enough for me to decide, actually, I, I do want to take my career further. At some point, you're like, I can do that. Exactly. Diego, you also started law school after a period of time in the, in the real world. Is that right? Yeah, that's right, Judge. Yeah. What, what, what did you do? I, before this, owned a small energy marketing company out of Baltimore, Maryland. What we did was we purchased electricity and natural gas from private suppliers, and then we did redistribute it. So for lack of better terms, I was a middleman. And Kerrigan, what what did you do before you went to law school? I only had a semester break from graduating from undergrad to going to law school. The last year of my undergrad, I worked as a legal assistant at a criminal defense firm in Kyle, Texas. And I continue to work there while I applied to law school, studied for my LSAT. And then I came fall 2022 to St. Mary's. What about you, Megan? So I'm actually a KJD student. I never took a break between school. I went right from my undergrad program into law school. Uh I graduated from tech with a dual degree in political science and philosophy. And there I did a lot of government internships, but I never actually worked in the law at all prior to going to law school. So in your opinion, is there an advantage to going straight to law school from college? Do you think it's better to work for a while? What do y'all think? Judge, personally, I think it has been, I think it's a massive advantage, even if it's not, you know, the eight year break that I took. I think it's a massive advantage to work beforehand. One of the biggest things about law school is 
you have to learn how to time manage and get things done. There's no more babysitters. There's no more homework or essays kind of thing. It's either, granted, I speak for myself because I didn't go straight from undergrad to law school, but I think I have a better understanding of time management. And I think I have a better understanding of the discipline of how to work, having worked before coming to law school. It is baffling, at least to me, how different the like undergrad homework and study all of that prep experience compared to law school. You can really say it's apples to oranges in terms of how, like Diego said, you manage your time. And for, for me, also being in the workforce for a little bit was a good thing because it's strict going into work every single day when in college, if you relax, you don't really notice that you're relaxing. You, you don't have anyone that can look at what you're doing and say you actually need to press the gas down harder. You're, you're, there's more that you could be doing. And that's what I really liked about my law school experience this year is it kind of showed me what I'm capable of. So what colleges did y'all go to? And Megan, I know you got a political science degree. I went to Texas Tech. That's right. I went to Texas State and I majored in psychology. I went to the University of North Texas in Denton. And I went to the Oklahoma State University and (laughs) and I got my degree in management science with a minor in information assurance. Uh, So you're the out-of-stater. Yeah, I'm the out-of-stater, which uh, to be fair, Oklahoma has always been looked at as Texas, you know, younger brother. And now that I'm here in Texas, it's hard to disagree. You're the baby brother. You know, I'll concede that. I'll concede that point. (laughs) Nothing wrong with that. The baby brothers get all the advantages. They get all the perks. So why St. Mary's? Why why did y'all end up coming to St. Mary's Law School? So I initially chose St. Mary's because I'm I guess I am not a typical student in the fact that I do have a family. I have a stepson that I raise and a fiance, and we live in Bolverde, which is 30 minutes north of here. And so that was a big factor for me because I just couldn't see myself going off six hours away from everybody. Um, And also my scholarship from St. Mary's also helped push me in their direction. So you were already home. Yes, this is home for me. All right, what about you, Ryan? For me, it was a little bit just the convenience of location. I have a fiance who has a career in Central Texas, and I also want to practice in Central Texas, and St. Mary's was an accessible outlet for that. And also the reviews I got from alumni were powerful enough to where I was like, this seems like a good institution. Really, three years is not that long. You like San Antonio? Definitely. And frankly, as an Austin resident, San Antonio has been a breath of fresh air because it's become a very overpopulated area in the last five years. It's about and, Austin. Yes. Yeah. And being able to come to San Antonio where things are a little bit more spread out, a little bit better planned from a city development standpoint. And uh, there's so much to do. That side of San Antonio that I hadn't really seen is really cool to see. Very nice. Megan? There were a lot of advantages to coming to St. Mary's. I mean, I'm closer to my parents and my grandfather now that he's getting older because they do live in Corpus. I mean, I did put my engagement into a long distance engagement because my fiance still goes to tech and I did it for the money. I mean, it was entirely a money move if we're being realistic. Um, I think that too many people stress about finances and where they're going to go, whether that's public or private. But I think so many law students like everywhere in the country, they kind of deter themselves from going to private universities because they think the price tag is higher, but they offer more scholarships to compensate for that. So I think that's also an issue with just admissions education, but that's why I picked St. Mary's. So I picked St. Mary's for a multitude of reasons. I think I'm on the same boat as everyone else that, you know, pat on the back for St. Mary's for offering a ton of scholarships to its students. I got a pretty hefty scholarship from them, but additionally on top of that, I've always wanted to be a Texan. You know, I grew up in a small town called Altus, Oklahoma. And I mean, I could throw a rock to Texas border if I wanted to. So I've always wanted to be down here. My family loves Texas. My sister's in Austin. My brother's in San Antonio. So um, when I opted to start looking for schools, my brother-in-law who practices um, in Austin now, he said, hey, listen, you should look at at St. Mary's. So when I saw that St. Mary's had a, a law school, I applied. And, uh, you know, they gave me a hefty scholarship and they asked me to come down. So sure enough, that's why I chose St. Mary's. You guys are talking about scholarships. You're talking about money. How significant is that in deciding where you're going to go to law school? And is there enough help available for people that are thinking, you know, I don't have the background. I don't have the money to go to law school. Is, is there something that they can do to help them financially? I am a very big advocate for loans. I think that if you are even going to work, because I want to work public service. So I know I'm not going to make 
I mean, a $300,000 a year personal injury salary. But I think if that's what you want to do, take out the loans. I mean, public service has 10-year loan forgiveness for a reason. And, right. if, and if you're not doing public service, then you're going to be able to pay your loans off. I don't think that money should really be something that takes you and puts you in a different place if you don't want to be there. I do think that if it conveniently works out that way, like it did for me, that that's what you should do. I think that's just the, the best way to go about the situation, but I don't think it should be a deciding factor in where you end up and how you become a lawyer or if you do it all. You know, It wasn't something that I considered when I was in law school, but since I've had this job as long as I have, I can definitely see the wisdom in that. And that's what I recommend to people. If you borrow a lot of money to go to law school, you should definitely consider a public service type job to make sure that you do that. So that's that's wise. Obviously, everyone's situation is different, but this was a question I asked other attorneys whenever I was deciding whether or not to go to school myself. And one attorney in particular was very candid saying, I borrowed over $170,000 for my student loans whenever I got out of school and I've been paying it off ever since. And when I'm finished paying it off, immediately I will take that income and put it towards my retirement because I'm already used to not having that income. It just shifts from one to the other and Sure, there's like a keeping up with the Joneses that you can't really do if you're trying to pay for that kind of debt, but that's not what's important to someone who's deciding law school later in life or with the financial burden. It's like Megan said, if you can pay for it with your career afterward and you can, then that's the thing that's more important. Judge, I have a really interesting take on that. To go along with Megan's point, I think, you know, if you do want to do public service, then yeah, take loans out, everything like that. However, if you don't want to take that route, um, I think you really have to have a strong why for why you want to go to law school. Mm -hmm. I, I think if you just want to go to law school because you're like, oh yeah, I want to be an attorney. Th that's a pretty general statement and it's way too difficult. It's way too much money. Like every time I have to fill out my FAFSA forms or anytime I have to fill out or, you know, I get the, the notification in my email of, you know, what my debt looks like now. It's like it's almost crippling to look at. And so if you just go to law school to get by and you don't get that high paying job or you don't want to go into public service, but if you just want to do it because it's something to do, you know, I'm never one to discourage people from doing what they want to do. But I would recommend people take a second look at why they want to become an attorney, because if you don't have the money to pay for it and you don't come from, you know, deep pockets, it's it's a scary number to look at at the end of the day. I definitely agree with Diego's point about the why. I think that's a big factor of what you should look at when you're going to law school because, I mean, it's not easy. Law school is not easy. It's not a walk through the park. And so if you are going to be taking out the price tag, I mean, I would hope that you would have a good foundation and background of why you want to do that. However, I do believe that it shouldn't deter you from going. I'm a first gen college student. My family is farmers and ranchers. Loans were scary for me when I first decided that I wanted to go to law school and I wanted to take them out but without them like I wouldn't be able to do what I wanted to do and so you should it, you should take out the loans if you're able to there's a lot of resources and like Megan said earlier private schools do offer more scholarships to compensate for the higher price tag for tuition compared to other schools that I was accepted to St. Mary's offered me the most and covered more of my tuition than others did makes me proud of my alma mater how do you explain to people what the experience is like to go through that first year of law school? And what, if anything, has surprised you about being in law school? Judge, I want to take this one over. <laughs> <laughs> because I've thought about this question so much, right? My sister and my brother-in-law, they practice. I have friends that practice. And every single one of them, everyone tells you what their law school experience was like this is what you got to do this is how it was for me this this and that and what i realized is that it is everything they said and nothing of what they said all in the same like all in the same coin it's unique to you to your experience and at the same time looking back for me i started law school 30 years ago and every time i see classmates in the court room in the courthouse we still go back to those days and hearken to the experience that we had and how much of a great time we enjoyed being together ryan uh to jump off of that i i got the same kind of advice that just cacophony of it's gonna kill you but you're gonna love it and i think my big fear going in was it's a it's a major decision obviously and you're scared the first day you're gonna sit down that you're going to just immediately like the 
Charlie Brown parent womp, 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 whenever the professor starts talking that you're just going to hate the material and you're going to be like, I made a giant mistake. And for me, that was almost the best part is that once you, you're there and you're actually learning, you're in a great experience that goes by so quickly because you're just stressed out the entire time. But because you're actually working towards something, it's not something you're hating at the same time. And the big kicker too is my realization was my support system was everything and I had my fiance I had my parents not even uh like a financial support just that emotional support that you can turn to it's the most you've ever worked most likely that was the experience for me is that like Diego said it's everything everyone's ever told you but then that individual time you're having is what's going to kind of be your core personality that comes out. And the emotional support is a big thing. And so that's when we reflect and recognize how blessed we are to have that. So when people ask me about my first year of law school, I tell them how I was in a constant state of fight or flight the entire time. And it's not necessarily, I just was scared because I didn't want to fall flat on my face. This was been a dream of mine for as long as I can remember. And so I just didn't want this to be a flop, basically. But I wouldn't have had it any other way. I think the best way also to describe was learning through a fire hose, but I loved it. I loved what I was learning. And even now with my internship this summer, it's so cool to be like, hey, I learned that in class and I actually understood understood that and I can apply it here and how it relates to the real life workspace. So, but yes, I will be honest. I was in that constant state of fight or flight because I was stressed out because it is hard, but I wouldn't have had it any other way. Just to kind of add to what everyone said, because I really agree with what everyone said, but I do think that lawyers that have already gone through law school and done their whole practicing, even the ones that are retired, they're like, law school is horrible. Like the most negative people you'll ever meet. And I'm like, okay, but did you meet like your best friends in law school? Because, like, I can, like, see all of you, like, at my wedding. And, like, I've only known you for a year. I couldn't say that about some people that I went to school with an undergrad for four years. So I think, like, yeah, you go through all this trauma and, like, all these problems. But, like, it really does, like, keep y'all together. Because you, like, y'all have seen me with my hair in tangles at the library wearing no shoes, like, walking around the library during finals. And then y'all have seen me, like, dressed up to go do something that day. So, like, you really see it high and low, and it's like they're there no matter what, and they're always going to be there to help you. So I think that is something really important about the whole law school experience that not a lot of lawyers talk about. I think these are honestly the strongest bonds you will have. I don't know necessarily if it's just we all have similar personalities so we get along or if it's a trauma bond from stressing out the entire time. But I fully agree with that. This are I have I'm closer to all these people than I have with my people from home that I went to school with from and I was four years old all the way to senior year. We go through the gauntlet together. You know, what I mean, it's not. It's not trauma so, bond. <laughs> yeah, trauma bond for sure. Um, it's not so much like to the extent of like military personnel or anything like that, but it's so mentally taxing that you know you go through so many mixed emotions of you feel rushed, you feel pressured, you're sleep deprived, you're anxious, you're nervous, and you can try to explain it to your parents. I'm first gen as well, or you know to somebody who's in a different profession. But unless you're just right there, like unless I'm right next to Ryan or Megan or Kerrigan, like no one understands. I don't know how to explain it, but I know what you're going through. That's completely different. And it allows you to just connect with people on a whole different level. I also really believe that law school is a team sport. Like, I do not think you can get through law school by yourself and isolate yourself. Like, I think you have to at least rely on someone to write on the whiteboard with you or go through flashcards or something. Like, you cannot just be by yourself. And I just, I wish that it was talked about more. To, to Megan's point, it's, it's absolutely true because especially now where there's shared drives of information, there's people that are exchanging notes, making friends is it's the network that you're building for the rest of your life. And if you are an introvert, that's one way that you have to go out of your comfort zone. You have to find people that are just as passionate about the material as you are and are willing to not help you, but just work in collaboration on the subject matter because it's impossible to try and take it in all by yourself. 
And a part of that is the structure of law school too, right? I mean, I don't know if everybody understands, but first year, all of you are in the same section. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah section B. Yeah. Uh, section B is the best section oh, yeah. every year. <laughs> Say that one more time for the record. <laughs> for the record. <laughs> it was back then. It is and it is today. So every single class your first year, you take together. I mean, all 30 hours, you got the exact same people. You're going through the exact same experiences. You complain about the exact same professors, the exact same work. You know, is this fair? Is this not fair? So you're going through all of that together. And that really is something that's special. That I don't think that a lot of folks in society recognize that that's what it's like to go through law school. Let's do a quick Q&A break. We'll be right back. is Q&A with Judge Ron Rankow. Submit your question today at beyondthegavelpodcast.com. Welcome to the Q&A break. We got a question. How do you keep up with the changing laws? Well, I know that uh, for practicing attorneys, continued legal education is a huge component of your day-to-day. You go through the Texas State Bar website. They have a myriad of topics that you need to pursue in a certain amount of hours that you have to meet. And that entire process is a thing you have to work into your day on top of practicing law. And as students, I think our professors do a really good job of updating current legal climate to accommodate their curriculum. But whenever we actually start practicing, I think that's going to be a huge deal. No, but it, you make a great point. The practice of law is to learn the law every day. Today, we're in the middle of a high-profile murder jury trial, and we had some very novel issues that I'd never been confronted with before. So coming back, I'm like analyzing those. We're looking things up. You know, I, I call my staff attorney and say, this is what I think. This is what's happening, what's your opinion, and we're analyzing the law. And then we start looking things up in terms of the Lexus. You guys are going through that process, right? So you learn how to read the law as you practice the law. And that's a great way to keep up with the laws. Hey, thanks for asking that question. That's a good one. We'll be right back. This is Q&A with Judge Ron Rankow. Submit your question today at beyondthegavelpodcast.com. Welcome back. I'm here talking to a panel of law school students. We're having a great discussion. So when I was in law school, St. Mary's was very proud of the idea that they didn't just teach you to take the bar exam. They taught you to sort of learn how to think outside the box in a global social way. Is St. Mary's Law School still undergoing that process? Do they still look at teaching law in that particular way? Uh, Just real quick, in my preparation for choosing St. Mary's, I had other law professionals. uh, I was coming from a trial background and that was kind of what I was most interested in. I had paralegals and attorneys saying, St. Mary's is a great option because they teach you how to be in a courtroom. And there are people that come from other schools that they they teach you how to pass the bar and they don't have that in court experience that a lot of uh, firms really like to hire for. Sort of like teaching to the test versus teaching how to practice. Exactly. Looking back now that you've completed a year, what is it about law school that has surprised you the most? Definitely that I don't have to dress up every single day because As we know, I would not live. I wear hot pink slides to school every single day. And if I had to wear a suit, it would not work. I think one of the biggest myths that I debunked in law school was the fact that I was not allowed to have a life outside of law school. That's just simply not true. I remember being so scared because, like I said earlier, I do have a seven-year-old son that I am raising. And I was worried, am I going to miss t-ball games? Am I going to miss school programs? Absolutely not. So, yes, you have to do a lot of your own, like, self-management and managing your time. Time management is the biggest thing that you will learn in law school, 100%. But as long as you manage your time correctly, you are 100% able to do things that you want to do. If you need to go out for a night because you're just tired of reading a million cases back to back to back, you there's nothing wrong with that. You shouldn't feel guilty for that. And I think that's a big pressure they put on people before they go to law school is that you will have no time for yourself. And that's just not correct at all. Yeah, I would agree. I think, especially my first semester, I would finish reading for my classes and then I would be done by like 6.37 and I would be like, develop this sort of anxious, uh, stressed mentality because I was like, I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough. If you go to class 
and then you read in between your breaks and then you go to class again and then you spend the next five to six hours doing what you're supposed to do, you have an evening to yourself. And so I think one of the things is if you complete your stuff, you can have a life. And I think that's, you know, to Kerrigan's point, a huge myth. You got to have that balance. So back when I was in law school, the entire grade was based on the final. Is that still the case? Sometimes the midterms included, but it's super small percentages. Yeah, we didn't have a midterm back in the day. Well, you guys are talking about relaxing and figuring out things to balance your lives. What do y'all individually like to do to relax? Does stress eating count? <laughs> I was like, um, I like to lay in my bed and stare at the ceiling yeah, fan. Naps, naps are key. <laughs> naps are such a luxury these days. Um, for me personally, I do like to watch movies. I think it takes me out of the reality of what I'm doing at the time. And I just get to go indulge and just be a part of another universe for, you know, an hour, hour and a half, two hours, just watch a movie. That is for me, with the exception of a jog or working out like Ryan, but I think that's more for health reasons than it is for leisure. For leisure, I love going to the movies. Like it is a staple in in my happiness. Because of law school, all of my hobbies that were for leisure became like uh, uh, more for health or survival. Like I got really into cooking, but I also need to eat to not die. Yeah. So, so, but that became a point of leisure during my days. I, I could take a break from studying and I go and I, I, I'm not any good at it, but it's at least, you know, I have the moment where it's like a little bit creative. What do I have in the fridge or the pantry? What can I make tonight? And that was a little bit of a leisure thing. Watching a movie, just giving yourself an hour and a half to not think about the law was really nice and, and exercise. But because you have such a limited amount of time in the day, all of those things for your health do become your escape. I like spending time with my family, just very simple. I love doing stuff like that. So it's really nice to be able to keep up with something that doesn't have to do with the law. Um, it helps a lot. I also got into puzzles because it's something I have, don't have to th I don't have to think too hard about. And so I stayed up until 4.30 in the morning doing a puzzle one day just to relax. So... One of the things you learn as a lawyer is that thinking like a lawyer, which is what law schools teach you, is not necessarily great for relationships. 100%. My fiance hates it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? Because because you get you get to those kind of questions like, what's your point? My fiance has been on the phone with me before, and I've been like asking him questions that are open-ended, and he's like, yeah, yeah, like absolutely. I'm like, do you not care about what I'm saying to you right now? <laughs> My poor seven-year-old hasn't gotten where he's very fluid with talking. I mean, he's fluid with talking, but you know, with a seven-year-old, you gotta have the whole backstory. I'm like, Reese, get to the point. After your first year of law school, what is it that you've learned about the profession of law? All of you are doing this in between years type internships, jobs, what have you learned? The biggest visual cue that I've taken immediately is how different working versus studying the law is. And I think people who did you know, kindergarten through law school, whatever that's, is that K-18? KJD. K KJD, that's what it's called. I think that's the biggest thing I've watched. I, my sister-in-law is a recent graduate from law school also and went directly from her undergrad. And the, the stuff that you don't talk about in law school, like billing, commuting to stuff, scheduling your day, the the meetings that you have to have that aren't even about the legal practice, the, the human resources components of it, that all can be very jarring when you haven't been in it and especially just not had a job there's also like the understanding of kindness that i've observed too where people bring you along into it and they're like we understand that you're a student this is what it's like to be an employee and it's a very gradual and comfortable shift hopefully if you get a good situation one thing that i have learned people put a lot of pressure on your grades and they do not matter if you're doing criminal law. Okay, I, you know what? It's, well, in a lot of areas. I like as the side note because I understand big law. They do look at GPAs. They look at class ranks. However, the biggest thing I've taken away is networking is the best way to get into your field, get into your profession, to learn the profession correctly. Because when you meet the right people through your network, you meet the right mentor, you're set. That's because big. You're going to learn your entire profession from this one person or multiple people, depending on how big your network is, that you're putting all these pressures on grades that you don't even need. And I, under I understand some people love to strive to be the top. And the last person in your class that passes the bar is also a JD and is also practicing right next to you. So that's kind of my view on the grades and what I've taken away. Kind of going along with that is also like your class rank doesn't really matter. Like, 
I'm not in the top 20% of my class and I'm still doing an internship with a federal district court judge. So it's like, typically those are only supposed to be for the top three people in an entire law school class. And that's just not the truth. Like if you apply and you're personable, I would try to work more on being able to talk to someone than worrying about being insanely above the median in your law school class. I think grades are important because not because I think they're completely indicative of how well you're going to be as a, as an attorney or as a lawyer. Um, but I think it's important that you do know the information that you're going to be end up practicing at some point. However, networking is in fact, one of the things that I was taught from the get go of like, it's equally as important and just a quick story. So for those of you listening, I actually extern with judge Rangel right now. And the only reason that he and I came into contact, shout out to the producer of this show, Alana. I was at a Sela event and Alana and I crossed paths and she was just like, I interned for the judge. And I was like, you should introduce me. And I harassed her for months <laughs> until I got until I got an interview with the judge. And so networking is equally as important. And, you know, the judge is one of the most well-respected individuals across the state of Texas. And so, again, if he was to look at my GPA right now. I'm not sure he would have given me the chance. Don't but tattle I'm just on kidding. yourself. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> my grades aren't bad. But um, no, if if it wasn't for my networking ability and just my ability to go up to somebody and just be like, hey, my name's Diego Lopez. Who are you? What do you do? How can we somehow, you know, mutually benefit in a professional setting? That's equally as important as getting, you know, the curve on on any sort of midterm or final exam in law school. I definitely don't mean to downplay grades. Yes, you need to do your readings. Yes, you need to try. I just think there's a lot of people out there who will have full-blown panic attacks and think the world is ending when they make their first C. Yeah. And unfortunately, we're all going to make Cs at some point. That's right. just how law school is going to be, especially with the bell curve, especially because you're graded against other people. And some people are going to have stronger suits in business law. And some are going to have stronger suits in criminal law. So I don't definitely mean to downplay the grades. I'm just saying that it's not the end of the world and it's not going to make or break your career. I think the larger point that I learned to from other professionals is I think law school makes you feel like if you don't hit a certain point or a certain X that the world might end and that your entire ecosystem might collapse. But really, at the end of the day, you're doing your work. That's good enough and everything will be fine. And if you're doing what you love, that is even more of a fact that you can expect. Is there something looking back that you wish you knew about law school before you applied? Like you're thinking, if if I would have known that. Yeah, I for me, Judge, it's, and, and people tell you this, but I think if I would have taken it to heart, it would have alleviated some of the pressure that I put on myself, is that everyone and their dog is in the exact same mental space as you. Like if you're out here thinking I'm not doing enough, oh my gosh, like the paper I just wrote is awful or hey, I don't know what I'm talking about or hey, um, like I, I just went to property and he spoke complete Latin. Everyone else thinks the same way. And sometimes I look at people and some individuals just have, you know, they're walking around with their chest out and they're just like, no, I got this, I got this. And you're just like, I don't. So then you get in your car and you drive home and you're just like, wow, I may actually not be intelligent. And you're, I mean, that's a scary thought in itself, but just knowing that everyone else is really is in the same boat as you, everyone else is just as stressed out, is just as anxious, just as concerned that their paper's awful. You know, if you take that into heart and you really just like give it your best effort, I think you're fine. But I really wish I would have listened to everyone else who said everyone else is in the same boat as you. So don't like, don't kill yourself over that. That's really good that that's life, right? Yeah. What kind of advice would you give anybody who's thinking, you know, someday I'd like to be a lawyer, I'd like to go to law school? What words of encouragement could you offer them? For me, I didn't consider the legal profession until I started working in it because, like I said, no one in my family kind of knew what being a lawyer was really like. I mean, if you watch The Simpsons, you assume Lionel Hutz is the template for what it's like to be a practicing attorney, or you just think you're gonna end up on a billboard. And the fact is, it's a labyrinth of different jobs in different industries. You can really find what you wanna do, and you also get to interact with crazy cool people. I'm talking to a judge right now. We had uh, a federal judge come to our property class who said he was classmates with President Barack Obama, and- Barry. <laughs> Right, they're on a first-name basis, excuse me. It seems he's closer with Michelle, but 
the advice I would give is try to find people in the legal profession and ask them why they enjoy it, why they got into it in the first place and maybe what they don't like about it and find out really the the bad stuff to see if going forward that's something that you could deal with as a career. I think my biggest advice would be to follow your passion because I think that's something that some people get out of tune with when they come to law school. They think they have to conform to what everybody else is doing and that's not something you should try to do. I know people have tried to talk me out of What I want to do, I do want to end up doing criminal defense. That's just where I'm passionate about. And that's why I have this drive and this love for criminal defense. But I know a lot of people have looked down on me because of wanting to do that. How how can you represent those people? Like, how can you defend somebody who's committed a crime? But at the end of the day, we're all human and we all have rights is how I see it. And I just don't want people... I don't like when people try to talk others out of what they want to do and out of their passions because they think they know better. You really need to look at yourself and figure out if you can do defense because you have to be able to represent someone in the best way possible. And if you don't think you can do that, you're doing them a disservice by representing them. So I think especially if you're interested in doing criminal law, my best advice is to pick a side almost kind of in advance because if you don't think that you're able to do that and you'll be able to try that in law school through internships and different experiences and networking but you have to really think about what's best for the client and not what's going to make you the most money and give you the most prestige very nice well y'all have an opportunity to ask me anything that you want what kind of questions would you have for me i have a question for you judge i know you're going for your fifth term so in your terms here What's been the most difficult aspect of your job? For those that don't know, judges are elected for four-year terms in Bexar County and in the state of Texas. Um, that includes county courts at law, justices of the peace, state district courts. Appellate judges are elected for six years. Because I'm in the criminal law field, the hardest thing for me is sentencing people who I know are not evil, don't have this bad heart and tend to hurt people, but people who get involved in some cycle where they sort of lose control of what it is that they think is important, they forget who they are, um, and as a result of that, somebody gets hurt. Judges are required to keep the community safe. Um, On occasion, you recognize that the only thing that you could do to keep the community safe is to incapacitate someone. And so that's a very difficult position to be in. Judge, I think as a, a panel of law students, my question is, What do you remember of this moment before your second year of law school, right after your first one? Is there anything you would go back to your younger self and remind them before they started their second year? When I finished my first year, I got got a job that first summer um, in Corpus Christi in an admiralty firm. firm. (laughs) And basically what I had to do was look at depositions and discovery and boil them down for the attorneys that were in the firm to recognize what it is that they needed to focus on in trial. I also had to look up the law, legal research. And so back then it was very different than doing it now. I remember getting out of work each day, going to, at that time, she was my girlfriend's house, um, who ended up being my wife. And I would tell her, Every day, I am miserable. I made an absolute mistake going to law school. In my mind, admiralty law was what a lawyer did because that was my experience. Looking back, I recognize all of the avenues as it relates to a career that people can choose to pursue. And that is a wonderful thing. Just knowing that the law touches every single thing that we do. And I knew that I wanted to be involved in constitutional type principles because For me, it's always been civil rights. Civil rights has always been the driver of my education, which included my undergraduate field. Looking back, I think I've been very fortunate. I've been very fortunate. As Diego, you mentioned the importance of having mentors, people that are in your career that you can look towards and that can guide you and that you can learn about the profession from. And then the rest of you talked about um, things related to the support that you have in your families and, and in your relationship. Those are very important things. And I spent a lot of time cultivating a career. The most important thing would be to couple that with your relationships and make that 
into something that's fulfilling and whole? That's a good question. Don't forget about your personal life. Don't forget about appreciating that journey that y'all are talking about. Well, arguably, interning or externing with a judge is something that a lot of law students seek to do at some point in their legal law school career, even if it's civil or criminal. What is something that candidates have done in interviews with you that has impressed you? You guys have kind of touched upon it, right? There's much more to it than just the knowledge that you bring about law school into what you're doing. The most important thing to me is what's your presence like? How do you see the world, right? Do you, do you understand that the people that you're dealing with are human? They have feelings. They have emotions. They deserve your concern. As lawyers, you deal with people that are like in the worst parts of their lives, and, and I want to feel some sort of empathy from people. Um, I want to feel students that have that, that care about the deeper world and the deeper person and looking at the big picture in a way that is recognizing that they're just one little part of society and that the best part of being a lawyer is to make the society around you, that microcosm, better and improve it. And so that's, that's what I like to see when I talk to students. What is something that we should be taking from law school and applying to the real world, whether it be something academic or just something that we should learn to implement in our daily lives to be better attorneys and advocates? Before I went to law school, um, after college, I worked with Child Protective Services, right? And so I was a caseworker, and I dealt with children that were involved with child abuse and neglect on, on, every, on every level, in every sense of the word. And a very distinct experience I have. So when I first got that job, it was my first professional job. I was getting a paycheck. I was getting a salary. So I had an opportunity to buy my first car. And that really excited me, right? So I bought a Ford Tempo. It was a 1993 Ford Tempo. And I was really proud of that car. And so I was looking at it like as part of my duties, I would take children in foster care to go visit um, families and to go do their um, doctor's appointments and things of that nature. So I picked up a five-year-old and a six-year-old set of brothers. Uh, these are brothers that um, I was taking to go to the doctor. And as we're walking to the car, one of those kids, I can't remember which one it was, picked up a rock and went along my brand new car and basically scraped a big old line, a big old scratch right down the center of it. And at that moment, when I felt that what in tarnations are you doing? I stopped myself and I, and I recognized that these children did not have the same kind of background that I had. They had never been taught to respect other people's properties and to not do those kinds of things, right? And so, what, and so I learned so much from that in the sense of recognizing that people need our empathy and sometimes you teach people in a different way than telling them things. Um, and so that became part of my vocabulary, part of my lexicon on how to be as a human. What you're learning in law school is how you're learning to be a lawyer. You're learning to work hard, but you're learning to balance. You're learning to appreciate the things that are in your life. Um, you're recognizing the importance of your networking and your, and your work connections, as well as your personal connections. Um, you recognize the significance of that life quality that you have, and you're learning to think like a lawyer, issue spot. So every single day that you're going through life, it's difficult at the moment to recognize that you're learning how to be the best you. And as long as you grow from that, I think you'll always do okay. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here today. It truly was my pleasure to host you. I feel like I learned a lot from y'all. Going through everything, I think as you get older, you always have to reach back and listen to, to the youth of today. Not that y'all are necessarily young, but your perspective is very refreshing. And I think I'm getting a lot out of that. And I'm sure anybody that's listening will get the same. I appreciate y'all being here. And thank you, the listener, so much for listening in. We'll be back in two weeks. You've been listening to Beyond the Gavel with Judge Ron Ranghill. Join us in the next two weeks where we are educating the public and expanding mindsets. Head to our website, beyondthegavelpodcast.com or your favorite podcast platform to subscribe to the latest episodes and updates.